healthy Illawarra flame trees in flower. The trees, red bell-shaped flowers, announce the end of summer. And under the shade of the jacaranda tree, I think of all of the wonderful things summer has given. There's been rest and reflection, growth and the achievement of milestones. A beautiful beginning to a new cycle. And I'm curious, Wonder Weavers, what gifts has summer or winter offered you this year? I'd love you to share. So thanks to you, Wonder Weavers, Cordelia is getting another toy. This week I sat down and made her a wooden doll, but she's not going to get the doll straight away. We're going to throw her a surprise birthday party and I want to say a big heartfelt thank you to those of you who replied to last week's vlog and shared your wonderful suggestions. I really loved reading them and uh, I got really excited and inspired by them. So thank you so much for that. So I celebrated my birthday this week. I took a lovely walk around the Botanic Gardens, one of my most favourite places, and I uh, enjoyed a nice slow walk because it's really hot here at the moment. We're experiencing another heat wave. This is day five. I really enjoyed sitting under the trees and watching the blue sky. The lotus is in flower and also the chocolate tree or cacao tree. So these little things made my day so special. And uh, I'm so grateful to be alive. So I'm curious, Wonder Weavers, what are you exploring? What are you creating? How are your projects going? I'd really love to hear from you. So now let's make a mini doll for Cordelia. Can you keep a secret, Wonder Weavers? There's going to be a surprise birthday party for Cordelia soon. And for her birthday, she's going to receive a doll. Lately I've been felting dolls, but for Cordelia's one, I've decided to make it out of wood. To begin with, I have a bit of a play, and with beads and metal wire, I try to make a doll's body and I quite like how this turned out and I might explore this idea further later on. Following the suggestion of a Wonder Weaver, I begin exploring how I could make a penny doll or something similar. I survey the internet and find some beautiful examples and I've put links to some of them in the description below. During the 19th century, the dolls were fairly simple and at times quite rustic looking. One of the things I learn is that they range from around 4.5 inches to 11.5 inches in height. These dimensions help me think about how big or tall Cordelia's doll is going to be. In the end I decide to make a 1 to 12 in scale, so around 3 centimeters tall. From what I can gather, the dolls were made using various techniques. One is a joining technique where the arms or legs or both 
are attached to the body with pegs. In other cases, a jointing system was created. This means that various parts of the body were attached separately, allowing one to move the doll more freely. For the body and head of Cordelia's doll, I'm going to use a dowel rod and her arms and legs are going to be made of balsa wood sticks. I take the dowel rod first and with a graphite pencil I map out the main features such as the neckline and where I want the torso to end. I also mark where I'm going to drill two holes into the rod. One will be at shoulder level and will be used to conjoin the arms. The second will be in the hip area and used to conjoin the legs. With my awl I drill the holes. Before I cut the dowel rod to size, I carve the various features of the doll. For the doll's head, I round the end of the rod with my hobby knife. And then, using the V-cut, I chisel out the neckline. And then around the doll's lower abdomen, I use a sweeping cut to thin the area. Once happy, I trim the rod to size. I use my wooden art mannequin as a guide to help me work out the proportions of the arms and legs. As you can see, the legs are longer and the arms extend down past the hip area. I then take four balsa sticks and these will be for the arms and legs. And where I plan to conjoin them, I drill a hole with my awl. And then cut them to size. Once trimmed, I take the balsa sticks for the arms and along one end I cut a V-shape. This will represent the doll's hands and fingers. I then carefully sand each part of the doll's body. Very soon, I start to see a mini doll taking shape. Next, I take four earring pins. I trim them with my earring pliers so that they're only around one centimetre in length. Then one by one, I push the shortened pin through an arm or a leg and then through the torso of the doll. To help secure the limb, I add a little bit of multi-purpose glue to the end of the earring pin. Once I've secured the limbs, I make some final adjustments. I then paint the doll with watered down acrylic paint. The colour I'm using is a mixture of white and brown.
Once dry, I paint the doll's hair with black acrylic paint and then two dots for the eyes and an undulating line in red acrylic paint for the mouth. Now it's time to dress the doll. I first play with different types of material, including lace trim. I also make different patterns in my sketchbook. There are two challenges with this doll. One is its size, it's really small. The second one is, is that the arms are quite close to the body and this makes it difficult to wrap fabric around the chest. In the end, as a result of these challenges, I decided to use a no-sew technique. I start by making the skirt. With my compass I draw a 3cm in diameter circle and then cut it out. From the outer edge to the centre, I cut a straight line with scissors and then a small circle around half a centimetre in diameter. I make sure that the circle fits. I then cover it with a piece of cotton fabric. As you can see, I've left a margin. I then glue the fabric to the paper. Next, using the leftover paper, I cut out a template for the bodice. I check and make sure that it fits the doll, and then I use a template to cut out another piece of fabric. I glue the bodice to the doll. and then fit the skirt. To make pleats, I fold the fabric covered paper at regular intervals. Once I'm happy, I glue down the flaps at the back of the doll with multi-purpose glue. For a bonnet, I glue a little bit of lace trim to some white paper, this is calligraphy paper, and cut a small arc, it's probably only about one centimetre in length, and then I glue it to the head of the doll. Next I make a parasol for the doll. On blue cardstock I draw a circle with a compass one centimetre in diameter. I then cut the circle out
then I fold it in half, then into quarters. And once more. I open the paper out. Next with a pin, I put a hole in the centre of the circle. With scissors, I then cut a straight line from the outer edge to the centre of the circle. I overlap the newly cut edges, forming a conical shape, and then glue the flaps down with PVA glue. Then to create a decorative edge, I cut little C's out from each segment of the cone. Then using an earring pin, I attach a small piece of lace trim that I've cut out. Next I push the paper onto the pin and glue the paper and the trim together. Then as a final touch, I glue a seed bead to the end of the earring pin. Now for the finishing touches. I use leftover lace trim for a shawl and make a necklace using jewellery wire and a seed bead. Cordelia now has her very own doll. For now, her new friend will sit in a box waiting patiently for her first cuddle. Thank you for watching Wonder Weavers. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. We will keep for now the dollar secret as we continue to make preparations for Miss Cordelia's surprise birthday party. And we're gonna have to also address the question of her room. Where is she going to sleep and play? with her new doll. Until the next time Wonder Weavers, take care, stay well and don't forget to play. Adios. Ciao. Now Muffin, don't touch the box. <laughs>